What is going on guys? Welcome to episode 16 of my Tottenham Football Manager 2018 Let's Play series. Again, in the previous episode, you smashed over 100 likes. If you could do the same in this episode, that would be greatly appreciated for the hype of the new season as well. Got to get excited for this. And I'm just noticing a start to the season in Premier League. It's fairly easy. Let's see if it will go that way. Uh, because you know what happened in the previous episode in terms of trying to get the Real Madrid job didn't really work. I got this comment here. It kind of made me laugh a few things about it. It said that I pissed the club. That's not really <laughs> correct. That doesn't really make sense. Maybe pissed off the club. Yeah, but, but I didn't. That's the thing. That's the thing. I didn't. I didn't treat them like shit or anything like that. As suggested, like, the board is still happy with me. I just applied for a job. How I still managed the team in that episode wasn't poorly. I made some sales again. Uh, we'll, we'll just go straight through. I want to show you how much money I spent. And I've sold even more players. But, uh, yeah, I just want to... Like, what happened in the last episode? Eric Dias is already selected right there. I sold him on the cheap for 80 million. Ah. <sighs> so cheap I should <laughs> in like, I don't know like if in anything in the world <laughs> to be honest 80 million I don't think it could be classified as cheap like yeah I thought that was a good deal more importantly uh the I guess you can say replacements but it's not like direct replacements it's more so yeah who would allow me to bring in but we'll focus on the players we sold first and then you can see uh, my signings if you think they're good I was gonna say good signings but it's up to you guys maybe maybe they're not that great but in a way, it's funny, like, I like having more, I suppose, critical comments now, because I feel like I haven't got that for a while, and it feels like, oh, maybe my videos are getting back up there a little bit now, because uh, people care enough to uh, hate, I guess you can say, <laughs> but as you know, I always just, like, laugh about it. Anyway, you know, Eric Dyer sold him for cheap, 80 million there, could have got more for him. <laughs> no, for sure, yeah, you definitely could get more for him in the game, but I think, yeah, 80 million is a good price, <laughs> definitely, again, considering what I did with it, Son went to Bayern, and you see what that allowed, maybe the title gives that away, uh, Victor Jansen, I just sold him as my last move, one of my last moves, and I brought in Balotti, but we'll talk about that a bit more, Trippier, 20 million, know that, Sissoko, I actually posted something on Twitter about this, just like in the social, sometimes the social media in Football Manager can be very, very funny to read. And yeah, then Enkidu, we sold him, Llorente, they actually went to the same club. Like I wasn't getting many offers, especially for Llorente, so I was just happy to accept that, to be honest. And just one more thing as well, in terms of how I treated my players, you can see the conversations uh, between, I'll, I'll put a, uh, one of them up uh, that I just screenshotted, and again, a pretty good reaction from the player, and I have a good, I suppose you can say, relationship. Again, regardless, I applied for a different job, that happens, applied for Real Madrid, didn't pan out, but I did sign two players from Real Madrid, actually, Real Madrid, we signed two of their players. Uh, but yeah, uh, I feel like I've always had a good relationship with the board and the players, regardless of that, before that and after it. So yeah, like there's no situation of treating them badly. All I did was apply for a job and it didn't quite work out, to be honest. I, I say didn't, some people might say call it a cock up again, like in that comment, or it didn't work out. I feel like I'm less extreme with the descriptions <laughs> of what I call things. But anyway... Ian Robin, don't forget we signed on a pre-contract, free transfer, we approached to sign him and we did exactly that. Of course, I'm not expecting him to be a star, he's older, he's 34, but I still think he can be a good signing, he can have some good games, sure he might miss through injury every so often, but he is still going to be a good signing considering we didn't pay anything, like in previous Football Manager years, you'd, you'd pay actually big money, or, or it could be called cheap money because <laughs> I thought oh, I'd pay about 50, 60 million for him. I did once and I thought that was a lot of money. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Marco Asensio, 70 million. Don't forget we had that deal when we loaned him. And I thought, can, look at his value, 65. Like I was wondering, should he be more expensive? Did we do well to get him on that deal, 70 million? Uh, you can leave your thoughts in the comments on that, of course, as well. And then the one maybe you've been waiting for when you clicked on this video, Gareth Bale, Back to Tottenham, we have got him back. He was actually transfer listed. That's why we got him below his value. He wanted to leave Real, I believe. He wasn't being played so much. So, yeah, he's back. He can play three natural positions in attack, the left wing, center attacking mid, right wing. So that's going to be good. You see we brought in a good amount of attacking players. But I suppose the replacement that we made, again, this is, it's 
maybe turns out to be similar money. I was like comparing. I could say three of these, like either of them could have been the replacement with the money we got uh, for Eric Dyer, because obviously if, if, like a few extra millions for like signing fees and whatnot. But that position, that position at least, Emre Chan from Liverpool, 62 million. There's a lot of like over 48 months, that kind of stuff. You know the deal. Uh, I don't like to go 100% up front, but he's going to be that defensive midfield, mate, central midfield, play ball winning midfield, but he can play a lot of positions as well. I feel like his attributes are really, really similar to Dyer, but he's got some higher ones in other areas. Like, say, finishing 10, I think Dyer's like 7 or something like that. He's nothing amazing, one of his worst attributes. But more specifically, Emre Chan, I believe he is, well, he is, he's more of a better creative player, again, with his passing. And I think his vision is, yeah, a few more uh, than Dyer. So, yeah, in terms of that, and he's still defensively around the same kind of rating uh, in his attributes, his defensive attributes. So, yeah, if you, you could just see him as replacement. When you see him as replacements, the deal looks good. You could say, yeah, play more, a few more seasons. Eric Dyer maybe could sold him for more. No, I'm still sticking on that. I'm still shocked someone thought that was cheap, 80 million. Oh, boy. Just like <laughs> a few days later after seeing that comment, I'm still shocked by it. I just don't know how that could be classified as cheap. And then the little, like, gibberish he said at the bottom. Well, it's in a different language. I can't understand it. Uh, but I can assume it's something negative. And this is a signing I went over, well, in terms of the position. I, I look for a defender because I did need a guy who would be a backup for centre-back and right-back as well. And he can even come into the midfield. I was trying to look for someone natural at both centre-back and right-back. But we'll train Ginter right-back. He should be all right. Uh, so he's another signing we brought in. And I was struggling to find one. It was more so a lot of the options I wanted to go for. The better ones were a bit too expensive. If I was going to go for all the signings I wanted, or that would have been like crazy amount. Like that was Marquinhos, I believe. Uh, he would have been ideal, I reckon. But yeah, it would have cost a little bit too much. And then Andrea Balotti, uh, we were able to bring him in. And it's funny because I wasn't getting offers for Jansen for like the whole preseason, off season. And we did in like the last moments, <laughs> essentially, not the last moments, uh, but when I kind of, I felt like, you know, when you feel like you've spent your money and yeah, this is all I want to do. And then you get that su surprising offer. And then we brought in Andrea Bellotti. So I think he's like a world-class striker. He's elite. So he's going to be that competition for Harry, Harry Kane. He's still going to get chances because he's great, but they're going to play their absolute best because they know there's a class guy waiting in the wings so now, uh, again, you know, we just have that game. Oh, oh, really big redemption against Stoke City after losing on penalties in the FA Cup final. And that's the thing. Like, last season, we won the Premier League pretty easy by the end. Uh, we made it to the FA Cup final against Stoke. Unfortunately, lost on the pens, as I mentioned. And even Champions League final made it against Manchester City. But Manchester City were just too good on the day. That was the only negative of the season, I feel. And, yeah, that was it. Um a better final on both occasions and it would would have really been a faultless season i guess you can say uh but yeah this this is going to be hopefully our redemption and you can get an idea of how the season will go i know it's just one game it can be compared to a preseason game as well but yeah at least for this episode hopefully we kick it off uh kick off this second season in a positive fashion and here we've got the match preview not so much to see here that's relevant it's the first I, I, this is, I'd say it's in between non-competitive and competitive match, somewhere in between like that, like a friendly game and like a Premier League match. So let's get into the team selection. Also, you see the numbers. Obviously, we brought Gareth Bale in. He was going to be number 11, so it resulted in some changes. Hopefully, they can kind of be self-explanatory because we did <laughs> bring through quite a few players there. And yeah, so we don't have to go through to explain all that. Also, uh, Gazaniga, he has come into the first team just to be that backup just in case keeper, really. I don't intend to use him. As Vorm did leave on a free transfer, wasn't really interested in renewing his contract uh, because, yeah, he wasn't really utilized. doesn't really matter for that reserve keeper. And you just hope your main keeper won't get a huge injury, which, yeah, is not really the case. So this is going to be the starting 11 to get into... This first game of the season, we've got the Community Shield. I think this is a very strong team. Obviously, we're missing Dali Ali, Robin. That means Asensio is going to start. That's going to be a question when Dali Ali is fit. 
in central midfield. Try and play advanced playmaker for Asensio. That's his best role. Anything else is nothing too amazing. Work on some others, like these situations, like Gareth Bale. Uh, he could be better as a winger, or you could say even play him on the right, but then Di Maria is better on the right as well. Like, if you want to use him inside forward, there's a few, like, situations like that. But hopefully, yeah, we'll be able to do well. Uh, so, yeah, just see the team. For the most part, I just want to get into the match now. Just, yeah, show you guys. You don't really... Well, yeah, it's... It, hey, there's... Who's having... I guess you can call it their debut. If, maybe. Maybe it's more in the Premier League you'd call their debut. But even Gareth Bale, his second debut for Tottenham. Asensio when he signed permanently as well. And again, that's with the centre-backs. I didn't want to make too many changes. I'm happy with Alderweireld, Vertonghen, a lot of experience there. So at least today, in terms of the players that are starting, there is not too much new because, again, Bale used to play for Tottenham. He's back. And Asensio was here last season on loan. So, oh, of course, Emre Chan as well. He just he just, he just just snuck in there a little bit. You'd be like, is he going to mention Emre Chan? Uh, yeah, he's going to sneak in there and hopefully he can play that role very very well i'm very ex actually i'm probably more excited to see how he goes ahead of bale and asensio but yeah bale back in tottenham colors well pretty much <laughs> very similar <laughs> they got the white uh, like Real. but oh yeah I've, oh, i am excited to have these new lads in the team asensio because i did manage him last season so yeah not as much but emre chan and then we got bale back in tottenham let's go and here's Stoke City side. They're playing that 4-4-1-1, rolling with those two defensive midfielders. You know, they've got a few players on their day. Like, they've got... Like, they changed so much for, like, five, six years ago, even longer, like, seven, eight years ago, when they used to play that defensive style. Now they've got a lot of technically good players, <laughs> especially these attacking players. They've got Shakiri, uh, Juve, uh, Boyan, and Berahino. So, yeah, I, I'm all for this one. Yeah, I know a lot of you will be keen to avenge what happened when we last played Stoke City. Like, I am as well so much. And then we'll just head into the tunnel. Andrea Bellotti left out. I think not real. Did he have... I didn't even notice he had reason injury <laughs> troubles, to be honest. Like, he seems fit to me, maybe at his previous club. But, yeah, I wasn't really aware of that. <laughs> like, that's not some. He's just been... Well, he could come on. It's not like a risk. Do you do you feel like sometimes there's not an option for what you actually made the decision for? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I could have selected him had I wanted, but it's important to consider the bigger picture as well. I don't know because, yeah, I'm just Harry Kane has been good. There definitely will be rotations uh, during the season. But I'm very intrigued to see just how we go. Are we going to create like more chances in this first half or something like that? Uh, let's just see right now. Gareth Bale. Uh, Gareth, he's going to be so dumb. I can tell. I can feel it coming on. And the, the great momentum to get into this game right there. It would have been nice to score, but we're killing it with possession, uh, having the right mix. So I think that's why we had a quality season. Because obviously we played a lot on this counter one. So... Uh, countering but maintaining possession at the same time has worked a treat but unfortunately we haven't created too many opportunities we've had seven shots but only one on target may have to be something we change in the second half uh, firstly we'll go with the team talk just assertively i'm not happy with the performance out there uh, fire up and motivate the lads so we'll go to tactics and this is where you would know i switch to attack and I'm just going to, sometimes I'll like go more direct, but we'll leave that for now as we've just still got 45 minutes to play, of course. And I'll, I still got to make some changes just to play in the best roles. I'll do that. And it's all about some experiments as well. Like, Gareth Bale, maybe, try him, maybe try him as a winger. We'll try him as a winger, uh, put him on attack there, and then Di Maria, he'll stay inside forward. Yeah, he'll, he'll be on attack as well. And I'm even thinking Ericsson. No, because I'm thinking, yeah, both roles. The same two advanced playmakers, essentially. That's maybe the only thing. But we'll just start the second half and see how it goes. And obviously, it like that could prove very dangerous. We've got to change up formation a little bit, but could bring Belotti on, keep Kane on. Two strikers that are absolutely class and elite. Don't know what that could bring. Emre Chan, oh, that's going to go in the back of the net. It's an own goal. Yeah, definitely it had to be. <laughs> I was talking about like the technical players they had. And Juve, he can see the own goal. But let's see how this one went right there. Emre Chan, see that powerful strike in it. And yeah, Juve, like, the power in that strike, he wasn't, he just couldn't get out the way. And when it hit him, 
it was going in the back of the net. So it looks like that change was pretty good. But again, that's another thing. Emre Chan, he shoots with power. Again, I think he has that over Eric Dyer as well. Again, I talked about the finishing, but the, that long shot. He's got 14 long shots, shoots with power. I think he'll be more in effect in terms of that as well. So I feel he does have more positives and we signed him for slightly cheaper. But 80 million is cheap anyway. And actually, because we do have that lead now, I'm not really going to do what I said in the end because we have that lead. We don't really need to play with two strikers. We're going to bring on Andrea, Andrea Bellotti there and, yeah, take Harry Kane off. So we get Bellotti some minutes. Almost thinking drop like Ericsson, central mid. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what happens with this change. And it would be nice if Bellotti came on and scored. I did give him the number nine as well. I think he can smash in goals in a similar way that Kane did. But uh, no, I don't... He's... Uh, Asensio will sub him off here, but he's probably going to have some form of knock heading into the next <laughs> game. So I'm going to bring on Harry Winks. And then my idea of... No, nah, I'm going to leave that because he could play that deep-lying playmaker. And even if you take a look at Emre Chan, we can t maybe because we already played deep-lying playmaker as well. So yeah, we want him actually... Put it on defend. That's the role I was kind of looking for when I was searching for a player to come in. That dire role, I guess you can say. And yeah, it's just, <laughs> we're holding on. We're holding on. Just say tighten up at the moment. We could have one more sub while well, we do have one more sub up our sleeves. And I'll bring on Ginter. Again, say the role we signed. Well, yeah, maybe a couple roles. He'll be full back on defend for there. And even Davis, uh, full back on defend. Just get that. And get those duties, roles and duties set. And yeah, hopefully, I'm thinking Emery Chan, though, drop him to defensive midfield and then can get him in the res the role. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was taking a look at some of the roles. Uh, yeah, register. See, again, there's going to be multiple roles he can play. And then we'll just drop these guys back on support. I'll keep on the attack because we have looked good. And, of course, you want to finish off the game uh, but, okay, I'm happy happy with that. Again, just play it out. I don't mind if we don't score another, as long as we win, as long as we beat them this time. But looking back, of course, you'll say, and I would say that as well, you would have preferred to win the FA Cup than the Community Shield. But you got only got to focus on uh, this season now. So this has been a good start. It has been a solid start. And it's like a game where you don't you take too serious. Obviously, it's still good to win. But what I mean is you still have in mind to play players to get ready for the Premier League season as well. So there's still that preparation, a part of it. That's why I said it's a mix between a friendly and a proper game. So let's just go to the dressing room. And don't forget, it was just an own goal as well. So again, nothing to brag about. Uh, but we are going to say passionately, congratulations, boys. Enjoy these moments. You deserve it. Again, this is not the major thing we want to do. Like this season, I feel like I'm going in for some Champions League revenge. Obviously, want to go... Back-to-back uh, -back for the Premier League. But, you know, this is the start of Tottenham. I'm I'm looking to bring a lot of success to Tottenham. And you're like, wait a second. You were trying to apply for Real Madrid. Like, I didn't plan. I didn't really plan to do that, thinking about it. Like, I mean, you see Real Madrid without a manager. And when you go on your profile and it says wanted and it says Real Madrid, like, if that happened to you, like, you go to your profile in the game, it says wanted and the team says Real Madrid. Like, I mean... Don't you for sure think that, oh, i got to consider this a little bit. They want me. It says wanted Real Madrid. Like, if I just saw Real Madrid that without a manager, I probably wouldn't have applied. It was just the fact where it says they wanted me, <laughs> to be honest. But a solid start to the season there with the Community Shield, ready to go into the Premier League from the next episode. Asensio, yeah, just that one to two days bruised knee. It wasn't an injury. It was more just that bruising so, yeah, he'll be right. We will leave it there, though. Guys, as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you could keep smashing 100 likes on each episode, I definitely will be continuing this series. And like I said, with those kind of comments as well, I feel like just, I say you guys, like anyone who's watching my video, just as a whole, I feel the interaction is getting back up there uh, that I used to have on my videos. Still needs to continue a little bit more. Uh, a couple of years ago, obviously, there's more FM creators now, which is a great thing. Like back then, that's what I was like. I was like, yeah, I would love to see more football manager creators to see it growing. And it, I, I'd say it is still very, very slowly. Uh, no one's got 100,000 subscribers. That's just done football manager. Obviously, I've got a lot from FIFA. Uh, but yeah, 
Um, a lot of football manager YouTubers have done a little bit of FIFA as well <laughs> in terms of that. But anyway, getting sidetracked a little. But as I mentioned as well, I think I said previously, I actually missed the days where, like I think I was saying it last year in that, where I would say I missed it a couple of years ago, like FM14, FM15. Those are my favorite days on YouTube before I even had a little bit more subscribers, you know, because I didn't get so many views and I didn't get a, a heap of comments, but I got, I got a, a decent amount. But they were all genuinely nicer ones because... Yeah, I, my videos weren't br branching out to people who weren't subscribed to me so much, I guess you can say. But I like that because I had my community and you guys are the ones I really like to focus on. But sometimes I have some comments I like to just to, to bring. I think it brings the entertainment value in terms of how I react to that. It's not really like always. I always try to do that for my videos from the very start. But anytime I'd mention a comment, people think I care about that. But it's all about like involving that into the video and make it entertaining. So hopefully... I can do that. But thank you guys for the support. You leave for real, for real. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next time.